met the love of my life and left 91 Grand Avenue right here in the to live across the city and go to the Palisade Rise in Leonia in 1987. John and I had our battles, let me tell you, and if it was particularly nasty, John on many occasions just couldn't put up with my grief anymore, would emphatically bark at me. Mom should have stopped at nine. <laughs> had some good ones, but that right there is classic. <clears throat> and he used it many times. <laughs> One of my earliest distinct memories of spending quiet time with John involves the two of us hand drawing with pencils illustrations from a massive three volume hardcover Miriam Webster, Webster dictionary set that dad had purchased for the home. John started copying these drawings on his own. I'd say he was 12 or 13 and I was seven or eight. I observed and decided I'd like to try my hand at it, and he was happy for the interest and helped me start. The illustrations simply accompanied a portion of the definitions in the book. The word might be loom or compass or ruler, and those words would be nearby an illustration of an example of a loom or a compass or a ruler or any number of objects. They were wonderfully detailed drawings in black and white, very technical, and John and me would silently reproduce these on line, clean paper, and compare our work. We might sit and do this for an hour or two or three and then we'd clean up, stacking our pages in order and tucking them back into the books neatly like pressed flowers. It was my first collection that I recall, my neat little catalog, something that comforted me, the activity and the collection, the catalog of my work. <clears throat> for John, I don't think it was his first. He was six years old and he was sharing with me something that had been giving him comfort for a few more years already and those creations those collections, those catalogs, even those ones that actually had no actual substance that had been compiling so astoundingly inside his wondrous mind would comfort him throughout his life. Sure, it included matchbox cars, Rebel and tester models, sporting event programs, magazines that would pile up around his places. But I came to know that, though it may seem like clutter, heck, a lot of it was clutter, Eventually, it was also the source of the historical things, the sports trivia, the road maps, car, truck, and plane models, family birth dates and events, and on and on that John could regale you with. John and I created a small library of these illustrations together as boys, but in his lifetime, he created a library of facts that marveled and impressed anyone who listened to him. The amount of raw information John could retain and so share with anyone interested and kind enough to listen was truly astonishing. And as the years passed, and you were one of those people who told him what a wonder it was, what he could remember and recite so well, well, it filled him with pride, and he appreciated your love and attention. John was so good at remembering stuff, and he took such pride in it that stumping him on a point in question was maybe among the meanest things I ever did to him. But we had a lot of fun when, when I'd fight back like that. He loved to stump me, so I just had to try and stump him back in his place. I felt a little ornery with him. He had that knowing smile, funny bend of his jaw and lip as he looked sideways out of those smiling eyes that gave away the reality that he'd been beaten at his own game. But it was okay. I was his little brother. We had a history and we loved each other. He knew I needed to win on this stuff once in a while, too. <clears throat> as John and I grew through the youthful years, I witnessed many of his struggles with solid friendships and academics. I recall the pain of summer school he was forced to in his high school years. The stigma of that while I thought it wasn't, while I thought it wasn't that he couldn't do the work well enough, but there were more painful troubles that were causing him to reject harder effort for certain classes and teachers that he battled with. I remember how John was my biggest financial supporter when he had a paper route and earned, and I was a broke punk little brother who liked Pepsi candy and potato chips just like him. I remember how John and me went all the way across the United States in a Greyhound bus out of Manhattan in under 24 hours to see Big Brother Tom graduate from the Air Force Academy in Colorado in 78. What a trip that was. The trivia wars were in full blossom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trivia wars. <laughs> trivia wars. I remember when I played Little League Baseball and midget football <coughs> here in town, my mother and father never came to cheer me on. Ten kids, you know. But Johnny, he was there for me. And I got the delicious fries in the little conical cup with the salt and the ketchup and the Pepsi when the game was over. 
and the walk home. Thanks for walking me home, John. I remember you, John, when you stood for me as my best man. When I married Betty Ann, I had to take over and play, and you faced what I'm sure you felt was a big pressure of getting up and saying something you knew had to be meaningful in that very big, people-filled hall. <coughs> crowd quieted, of course, as you strode up to the lip of the stage, and someone in the band handed you a microphone and the necessary glass of champagne. You surely weren't going to drink from it if you weren't blessed with that old Irish curse. <laughs> my nephew Richard, God rest his soul, captured the whole thing on my video camera for the record. Thanks a lot, Rich. John, you raised the glass, turned to the gathered families and friends, and said, hi, everybody. How's everybody doing today? I just want to say a few words about him. You know who. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> he's taught me a lot of things over the years, more than he will ever know. He's a great brother. We always had a lot of fun together. And may they live long and happy lives. And you raised the glass and someone said, here, here. And there was some scattered applause as you hadn't taken the drink to circle your ending. So we waited with bated breath. And you said in your classic Jersey accent, frank and matter-of-fact way. That's about it, folks. <laughs> it really cut the shot as the laughter was just erupted. <laughs> that is about it, John. Thanks again for it all. Thanks for letting me walk you home on this last lonely one today. Rest in peace, my good brother. We love you. Thank you.